please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. This year marks 100 years since the end of World War I, and 73 years since the end of World War II. It means that the only first-hand experience that any of us here might have had of those times, of the impact and horror of war, is as young children, far removed from the actual conflict. Perhaps there is still some direct experience of the Korean War, and many of us anxiously watched from the sidelines the futility of the Vietnam War. More recently, war in Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria began a new era of warfare with far, far fewer on the ground soldiers and many, many casualties that were local civilians. Civilians. In all of this, it seems to me that we have lost the personal connection that causes our remembering to be more than honoring those that lost life or suffered loss, not to diminish in any way the need to remember those. But we have lost the remembering that keeps us from repeating our history of violence. The rise in rhetoric around the world that is anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, racist, and sexist is symptom of our loss of deep remembering. It has led to a rise in violence made perversely permissible by angry and hate-filled language by people in positions of power all over this world. We need to remember to remember and to realize that peace comes through individual lives and begins in our own hearts. Cy Miller and Jill Jackson captured this beautifully way back in 1955 amidst the dangerous and fear-mongering rhetoric of the Cold War when they wrote let there be peace on earth, and let, let it begin, begin with me. Peace cannot be demanded. Peace can only be lived. To take each moment and live each moment in peace. So how then does the gospel reading that Joan read this morning show this? For me, it is the call to live with integrity, to live heart-centered. The scribe in the first story is completely ego-centered. He walks around in long robes demanding respect. He expects the best seats and the places of honor. He says long prayers while destroying lives. All his actions are based on power and prestige and without connection to his own heart where compassion dwells. Living so disconnected from his own heart center allows him to hurt, to demean, and even destroy other human beings. No inner peace means there is no outer peace. Similarly, in the second story, it is ego-centered to give out of one's abundance if there is no personal sacrifice con con connected to it. Money <coughs> is the literal part of this story, that it, it doesn't hurt someone with wealth to give a large sum, while for those with very little, even a small amount, is very, very difficult. 
But I believe Jesus is talking about more than money here. Like the scribe, he is calling out those who give the appearance of compassion, but are unwilling to make the kind of difference in the world that brings peace and is good for all people. This kind of giving does not bring inner peace or peace to our world. It is only when we are willing to give our whole being to love's cause that peace becomes in us. And through that, peace becomes in the world. Richard Wagamese captures this way of being beautifully in his reflection called Remember to Remember, which I stole from my reflection title this morning. And he says this, Remember to remember. This is what old man said to me one time. He was speaking of ceremony, of the act of bringing myself closer to Creator, returning myself to innocence, my original power. Remember to remember. He meant for me throughout my day to recall that I've taken time to pray, to give thanks, to ask for a return to humility. Remember to remember. When I do that, everyone and everything I encounter becomes the beneficiary. It's a good teaching, as long as I remember. Each one of us needs to remember to remember, so that compassion rather than violence becomes. Each of us needs to remember to remember so that we keep returning to the source, to love. Each one of us needs to remember to remember so that real peace becomes within us. In the reading from Embers this morning, Richard writes, I came here to inhabit a body that would allow my soul to experience. I love that. That translates to awe, joy, and reverence. And I add to that, like the poverty-stricken widow. Awe, joy, and reverence for all life, for all beings, for all creation. Knowing this, understanding this, makes living the hardest thing of all. But the joy is in the challenge, the gradual day-to-day -day becoming peace. May each of us, day by day, and moment by moment, remember to remember.